Starting off at number 10 now, we have The Safe House. On May 5th, 2017, the YouTube channel Shai posted a video of him discovering and exploring a fully stocked underground safe house. He found it while walking through the grounds of an old factory in the industrial area of his city. As he was exploring, he discovered a strange concrete block with a metal gate on the side of it. He opened it and climbed the ladder. There, he found a dark, small tunnel leading to an underground bomb shelter and safe house. And what you're seeing here is the results of that exploration. The room seems to have been abandoned but was also scavenged for valuables before its owners left. Some of the rooms contain old looking military posters written in Russian. Many of the posters were mounted behind glass on a wall and lit up. I also find it strange that this place still has electricity. Other rooms contain boxes of supplies and equipment, enough for dozens of people. Why did they need those supplies? What were they planning? And perhaps most importantly, where are those people now? Moving on to number 9 now, we have The People Above. This video was uploaded in October 2017 by the YouTube channel Probs. They visited this underground bunker, but five of their friends ended up turning back eventually. That's how creepy it got. They said that continuing to explore it just as two was the worst decision they'd ever made and that it was terrifying. After following brick hallways filled with pipes, the rooms eventually began to open up. They still had no idea what the bunker was used for. There were strange holes in the floor that revealed another space below. Low. It appeared they were standing on just a thin bit of concrete. When the others left, the vibe got even creepier. Their bravery was rewarded though when they found a secret area where it seemed like the ceiling had actually caved in. The nervous laughter turned to genuine fear though when they heard someone else nearby. Don't... I can hear someone on top of us. It wasn't long before they decided to get out of there before they run into whoever or whatever was down there with them. Coming in number 8 now, we have the water plant. In March 2018, an underground bunker in southwest England made the news when it went on sale for £28,000. That's about $36,500 for our American viewers. Is that a good price for an underground bunker? Maybe, but just wait until you see the inside. The bunker was built underneath an old water plant that had been decommissioned and largely forgotten about since the 1960s. It was bought by a man who wanted to turn it into a hostel or, wait for this, a a mausoleum to store the ashes of dead people. Okay then, as you can see from these pictures, it certainly had the right vibe for that. The rusting hallways and corroded rooms are being slowly reclaimed by nature. Moss and grass is now creeping over the old machines and corrugated walls. The owner said it isn't even suitable for residential living. And yeah, I think most people would agree. Moving on to number 7 now, we have Hello Satan. In 2014, two men in Germany were out exploring some woods when they found two strange pipes just sticking out of the ground. As they got closer, they found the entrance to a bunker surrounded by trees. They prized the wooden lid off using a crowbar and found an iron door. They went through that and followed a sort of dark hospital looking corridor for what felt like forever. Other pathways appeared but they decided to keep going straight so they didn't get lost on their way back. There were holes in the wall that appeared to be made by a hammer. Eventually, they started to find strange graffiti on the walls and realized they weren't the first people to discover this bunker. Now at first, it seemed like the kind of graffiti that just some kids would do for fun, but then the writing seemed to get more sinister when they found some graffiti that just said, help. Then, they found a huge yellow door that seemed to have been ripped off its hinges. They didn't think it was possible for a person to do this. It looked about as heavy as a bank vault door. After that point, the room seemed to look more and more decayed. Eventually, they found some graffiti that, in German, read, Hello Satan, I love you. Now that is when they knew they had seen enough. They quickly retraced their steps and left the underground bunker. Next up at number 6 now, we have Mothman's Lair. Those of you who have watched a lot of my Urban Legends videos over the years will have heard me talk about the Mothman. 
a creepy half man, half moth creature that was seen across West Virginia during the late 1960s. The locals said that the Mothman had a secret lair that only a few people knew about, the TNT bunkers in Point Pleasant. In 2016, Dan Bell uploaded a YouTube video of him and a friend exploring these abandoned bunkers. They had to make their way through pitch black marshes and woods until eventually they found the entrance to the bunker. Slowly, they headed inside in silence. The old walls were covered with graffiti, many of them making reference to the legend of the Mothman. There was also this satanic graffiti that said burn the witch and also 666. That echo is insane. After a short walk through the woods, they came across another bunker with similar writing on the wall. Needless to say, they didn't find the Mothman, but there are two other videos in their Mothman Lair series if you guys want to go check them out. Moving up to number five now, we have Urban Geeks. These are the guys who uploaded a video in May 2018 showing a creepy bunker they found in England. After exploring the surface level for a while, they eventually do go underground. A nice bunker for everyone. Look at this. Oh my god. Blast shields. Oh yeah, like the little blast shields and stuff. Do you want to get the two torches out? It gets darker and darker. The graffiti becomes more difficult to read. The walls look like they're crumbling around them. And then they see this. Oh my god, how freaky is that? No, 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 look at this. Maggot hash too. They've actually tagged the machinery as maggots. Like, I don't know if this is gonna- That's right, some graffiti telling them that they are being watched. Now your natural reaction if you saw this may be to just dismiss it as a joke, but part of you would still be wondering if someone really did live in that complex, watching every person that passed through, and perhaps never made it out. Eventually, the temperature actually started to plummet in there, and they decided to get out of there. Next up at number three now, we have the Führer Bunker. Now those of you who are up on your head history will recognize this name immediately as the last headquarters of Adolf Hitler during World War II in Berlin and the place where he committed suicide. It's where Hitler made his last ditch attempts to save his Nazi regime as the armies of the Allies rolled towards Berlin. Like I said, Hitler killed himself, the Allies soon won the war after that and the Soviets spent the next four years destroying Nazi landmarks. They tried to blow up the bunker but only partially succeeded. In more modern times, German authorities dismantled everything else and built a car park on top of it. You wouldn't even know you were there if you walked past it. This has been done intentionally in an attempt to stop the area becoming a neo-Nazi shrine. Moving on to number two now, we have the Medical Bunker. In July 2016, the YouTube channel Hell on Earth posted a video of them exploring an abandoned underground World War II medical bunker in Sheffield, England. Before going in there, they were told it was used as an air raid shelter for people trying to hide from German bombs and also to treat the wounded. One of the first things they found was some sort of melted candle thing or egg yolk. I don't know. You take a look. It's hard to tell. Candle that's gone all rotten. How can wax go rotten? That's not a candle. That looks like grease. There's probably someone's innards. I think it's egg yolk. <laughs> Fry up, boys. Oh. Reeks. <laughs> then things start to take a bit of a creepy turn when the guys hear a strange knocking sound in the background. Just, but this is where I came in. See that? What? What's that knocking noise? Shine, shine the light. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alright. What a real. The group carries on as far as they can, but eventually there are huge parts of the ceiling that have just caved in from the ground above. I was wondering what would come after if they kept exploring past that bit, but they didn't. They turned around and went out. Maybe they'll return one day. And finally number one now, we have the Secret Forest Door. This video was uploaded by a World War II History Hunter channel in 2016 who explores old World War II sites. This one was an old German bunker. Now he's visited the site before this video, but this time he brought the equipment. You can see that there are definitely tracks of human activity. This is built and uh, 
we can go a bit further in before we can put on the... The bunker looks to be in bad condition. Decades of water pouring in has corroded the iron and turned the wooden beams to pulp. He then finds a long hallway where the walls have metal bars coming right out of them. He guesses that this is because there used to be doors there before. Where they are now, he doesn't know. As he heads deeper into the bunker, the lack of light makes it almost impossible to film and we have to rely solely on his verbal descriptions. He enters a huge room with stalactites coming down from the ceiling. He sees another door which leads to an area with more stairs. How many stairs? 20, 30? There's a lot of them. Cool. This is the uh, lookout position from the outside here. This is on the other side of where the hatch was. These stairs actually seem to be built into the very living rock. Whatever the Germans were planning for this bunker during World War II, they wanted it to withstand a lot of firepower. Starting us off with number 10 is the Maginot Line. Now, the Maginot Line was a fortified line of bunkers, defenses, and forts that were along the French German border. The entire thing took nine years to construct and was finished in 1938. And it is massive, you guys. I don't think I've ever seen a bunker this big. Sometimes the bunkers would take up an entire mountain, which is no joke. Like they had layers, it would go surface of the earth, then the soldiers' quarters, then more quarters, then the ammunition, then the telephone bureau, then the hospital, and then the subterranean connection which was an underground train of sorts and then the final bottom layer was the ammunition stores. I feel like this wasn't in order but you guys get what I mean. And to get to each layer were underground elevators like I'm thoroughly impressed that they constructed all this in the 30s. But the reason I'm going on about the past is because the turrets and entrances and exits of the bunkers are still very much exposed so I'm pretty sure you could just go right in and explore the mini city below if you truly wanted to. But I mean I don't know how tempting that would be unless you're an urban explorer because based off the pictures of the bunkers, it looked like one of those abandoned, creepy asylums where you just know something or someone is lurking down there and has been for a while and is just waiting for someone to venture down there to kill. And I don't know about you, but I don't intend on being that person. Coming in at number nine is the underground city. Located around nine miles away from Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, Site R, also known as the Underground Pentagon, is a massive bunker that was built in the 50s. The bunker was built for Armageddon itself. There are miles of underground tunnels and access shafts, yet no one has been willing to say what is actually on site. There are rumours that Raven Rock is a full underground city, and I'm talking streets, pumped in air, room for 3,000 people, houses with huge supplies of meals ready to eat, and of course, a special presidential apartment as well. No bunker is complete without a space for the president, am I right? Screw civilians! Many believe it was made to survive an electromagnetic pulse or nuclear blast. There's barely anything known about the bunker or how extensive it really is. The only documents discussing the site just talk about how it's unlawful to make any photograph, sketch, picture, drawing, map, or geographical representation of the site. My question is, why did the government commission making a massive end of the world bunker in the 50s? What do they know that we don't know? And should we know that? I feel like we should. Should I be making my own bunker in preparation? Someone let me know. At number eight, we have the Bethesda bunkers. Now this case is a bit weird because the bunkers were hidden and only became known because the house they were located under had a massive house fire. The house was located in Bethesda in Montgomery County. After the fire, police found the body of 21-year-old Askia Kafra in one of the underground tunnels. Daniel Beckwith, the homeowner, was Kafra's friend and he was working inside the house when the fire broke out in the basement. Daniel managed to escape but Kafra died by the time firefighters got inside. Despite all this, he still hasn't talked about what happened that day or why he was building those tunnels and bunkers under his house. I feel like that's the first question that should be answered in this case. His parents suspect there's something more at play here and Kafra even told his friends that Daniel hired him to dig the tunnels but he had to be blindfolded every day before coming into the house because Daniel didn't want him to know where he was living. Which is just very suspicious. I don't know how he didn't see that as a red flag but there you go. The whole thing just screams shady. Just me. Definitely shady. Filling and number 7 slot is the hotel and I mean I wish I was talking about a bunker that had hotel level comfort, but alas, I am not. Back in 2011, while construction workers were laying the foundation for a bar in the Sofitel legend Metropole Hanoi Hotel, they uncovered an air raid shelter under the hotel, and boy, that was a very long name for a hotel, let me just say. It was constructed during
during a past war with the US and it's basically fully intact. The foyer tunnel is more than 2 meters long and the whole shelter has 6 rooms with 2 entrances. One can be found below the pool and the other is at the hotel center. Even after it was discovered, everything the workers found remained untouched and the bunker is now open to the public for viewing. It even received a UNESCO Asia Pacific Heritage Award for Cultural Heritage Conservation back in 2013 so it really is like an untouched time relic. It even has an autograph carved into its wall from Australian diplomat Bob Devereaux back in 1975. I'm just surprised no one discovered the bunker before the bar was being built, like did they not discover it when they were building the hotel itself? How is an underground structure like that so easily overlooked? It beats me. Now at number 6 is the hike. So if you live in Oregon and one day you wake up and feel like you have your life together and decide you know today would be a great day to go for a hike. If you go on the Tillamook Head Travis hike and trek over 6 miles of forest and plunging cliffs you will come upon an old bunker that no one knows about. Well except for the people watching this right now. Now we all know. The landmark of Tillamook Head itself is nearly 15 million years old so it's been through a lot. But 1.5 miles away from Cannon Beach there are bits of moss laid in concrete and metal and a bunker the size of a school bus. That's it. There are no signifying plaques, no signage, nothing. Despite the wealth of information that the internet is, no one can seem to find anything about this bunker from the early 40s. But real life historians on the other hand do have some information. Not a lot, but some. A historian at Fort Stevens said the site was used by the US Army Air Corps for about a year, year and a half during World War II. It had a 30 foot tall antenna that was manned around the clock by 8 people and was part of a radar station that looked out for enemy aircraft. The bunker and the antenna were only one small part of the whole thing. It used to include a full camp, a pump house, barracks, a mess hall, storerooms, around 50 to 100 men worked and lived there. So I mean if you don't want to find a creepy old bunker on your morning hike, maybe avoid this trail. At number 4 is codename 17 slash 5001 aka the secret 3 story bunker that was one of the communist world's most highly advanced bunkers. It was 16 miles away from Berlin, it reached a depth of 70 meters below ground and it had 85,000 tons of concrete in the form of a blast cap that was meant to protect from any explosion above. Sounds like the whole shebang. The bunker had tunnels that divided 170 rooms, AC, power generators, a fountain and even springed rooms that were designed to cushion people from explosions. It took 5 years to build and despite being designed for East Germany leader Eric Honecker and 400 other staff members it was never used. Eric himself only visited it once and was unhappy with its environment. Urban explorers found and entered the bunker before officials did but when they finally did find it they opened it to the public for 3 whole months. Now its walls are covered in mold and the decontamination chambers are very much out of service. I love how this bunker is literally half above ground half not stayed undiscovered for as long as it did. I mean it's in plain sight I'm just saying. Filling at number 3 slot is a secret french bunker. Urban explorer Mark Ascant made it his life mission to find it and capture places before they are gone for good so the history behind them isn't lost. He heard rumors of an old hidden nazi bunker called the wolf canyon and went to search for it. Having explored a lot of terrain he heard about strange concrete buildings in the forest near Marjeval so he checked there next. He hiked for hours and finally found the building that was slowly but definitely being run down by nature. Inside the extremely run down building was an entire complex that was used by Hitler and his staff. The bunker used to be a key command center for German troops and it even had a swimming pool next to it which they covered in a camouflage tarp to keep hidden. Thankfully Mark found a hole in the wall, I mean I don't know how thankful that is, that let him get inside the building and it looked like a site from American horror story asylum. Long abandoned hallways, over 6 miles of tunnels, rooms and storage areas, it was even equipped for a counter attack if need be. Some say he hid there after a suicide so he could plan attacks on Britain or Paris if need be. Thankfully none of those happened but the bunker was insanely creepy. Imagine going down there to explore and never finding your way back. I know there are a lot of Nazi bunkers on this list but are you really surprised? Hitler was extremely paranoid and wanted to be 100% secure everywhere he went. Every room in every bunker had a purpose, he even designed and ordered every single one of them himself. Man was not playing around. Now at number 2 is the homeless camp. Back in 2017 as part of a homeless camp clearing in Fountain Valley, police came upon many things. Drugs, needles, stolen items from nearby homes and a bunker filled with more than 1000 stolen bikes and a loaded gun. Yeah I wasn't expecting the last one were you? The bunker was camouflaged to blend into the dirt and was big enough for a 5 foot 7 person to stand inside. So 
I'd pretty much fit in there very easily, thank god. Perks of being short. The gun was wrapped inside a hoodie and it had three empty shell casings, meaning it had been fired not once, but thrice. Which creates another problem like when the hell was this gun used, who did it shoot, if anyone. I hate when one problem breeds other problems, like no please I'm drowning, I don't need any more problems. But anyway, police have speculated the bikes were part of a large scale theft ring. Residents in the local area have been complaining to sheriffs and police for ages to try and get the homeless encampments cleaned up, but they only got to it that year. Come on authorities, you have to get on it quicker, maybe if they had listened earlier, they would have found the bunker. Yeah, and not as many bikes would have been stolen and someone might not have been shot, who knows. And finally, at number 1 is the Rexall bunker. So now this one it truly stumped me, like I had so many questions and I know you guys will too and I won't be able to answer any of them so let's go. Back in 2015, a bunker was discovered very near a Rexall center which was going to be used as a tennis venue for the upcoming Pan American Games. Now if you don't live in North America, a Rexall center is basically sort of like a pharmacy, grocery store sort of thing. Police found the bunker in a densely wooded area that was fenced off restricting access to it. It was a very well built and whoever made it went to extra effort to make sure it wouldn't be found. It was 10 feet underground, 33 feet long, it was receiving power from a cord connected to a generator in a hole dug nearby. Inside the bunker though they found rosary beads nailed to the wall with the Remembrance Day poppy with them as well. Which begs the question was this just a historical tribute, was it more, no one really knows. On top of that the bunker had it all, a sump pump to remove groundwater, a pulley system, a gas container, moisture resistant light bulbs, food and containers etc. In an attempt to hide the entrance of the bunker, the owner covered it with dirt and plywood and insulation was placed around the generator to cancel out its sound. Despite all this being random as hell and the police having no leads on who did it, they can't actually even do anything about it. As weird as it is, it's not a crime to dig a hole. There's nothing about it that warrants criminal action in any way. They've since filled the bunker in but again, no idea who made it and why. It's not a crime but it surely should be at least a semi-crime of something. 